In this lesson, you are going to learn how to truly nail your very first song on bass, plus every other song after that. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and if you're brand new to bass, or if, even if you just haven't got through a whole song just yet, then check this video out, you're gonna enjoy it. Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and of course, becoming the best bassist you can be. And if you've just started playing bass, you're probably, you know, quickly bombarded with things you realize that, you know, quote unquote, should work on. You need to work on scales, technique, music theory, licks, different styles, slap bass, improvising, you know, the list never ends. I believe though that at the very start of your bass playing journey, one of the biggest wins for you as a bass player is playing through an entire song and actually making music, right? Whenever I have in-person students who are day one beginners, I always ask what kind of music they like, and then we try and figure out something that we can play preferably uh, right then and there on the spot. I'd much rather dive into making music rather than starting off with a ton of exercises or theory or learning things like that because while that stuff is incredibly useful, at the start, it can be a little bit discouraging. Playing a song that you love though, there's almost no better feeling than pulling that off for the first time. And doing that will actually motivate you to practice way more than you know some exercise or some theory concepts. And the result of that is that you put more time in on the instrument and you know, become a bassist. <laughs> so how do you nail your very first song? I've got four things to share with you. The biggest factor in nailing your very first song isn't your technique or your speed or anything like that. It's actually something much simpler, picking the right song. You wanna find a song that's in the butter zone. Pick a song that's too hard, then it's you know very easy to get discouraged and quit, and then your bass ends up getting left in a closet gathering dust, right? For example, you may love the bass line that Flea plays on the Red Hot Chili Peppers around the world. It goes like this, one, two, three, four. It goes like that, right? Now, the problem, that bass line, it's not the easiest. It's pretty hard even for some experienced bassists. So you may love it and you may really want to play it. So you might, you know, try and tackle it and discover just how difficult it is and then get super disheartened. On the other hand though, if you pick something that's relatively easy and you can spend a day or an hour or even 15 minutes to master that bass line, then you'll have the opposite effect. You'll spend more time on your bass and improve exponentially faster. So what if, instead of playing Flea's bass line on Around the World, you might take another bass line of his, one that he plays on the other side. One, two, three, four. Yeah, much more manageable, right? You don't have to, you know, play up high and shred and do all that kind of stuff. The more difficult lines, they're still gonna be there after you've mastered the simple ones. So don't worry about not tackling them straight away. Put them on a list somewhere, either on your phone or in a dock somewhere, even write them down on a fridge. You know, st get stuck into them when you've got some others under your belt and you've got a bit more experience. You also wanna find something that you actually like and something that you actually want to play. If you're not excited about playing whatever song you're learning, you're gonna be way less likely to pick up your bass and actually put some time into it. Now, if you don't know what to choose as the first song to master, I do have a whole playlist of dozens of beginner-friendly songs uh, that you can check out. I'll put a link to it in the description, but there's, you know, straight up pop bass lines, old school rock, some funk lines, even some slap bass lines, if you're into that kind of thing. And it's all easily achievable as a beginner, uh, and you can get all the tabs for them and tracks as well, uh, so you can start playing them instantly. But if none of the lines in any of those playlists uh, tickle your fancy though, you can simply go to your favorite search engine, type in the name of your song plus bass tabs. For example, Other Side Bass Tabs is going to give you hundreds of results. Uh, you could also search YouTube for tutorials for, you know, songs you want to find out how to play. Uh, you know, it's a, if it's a halfway well-known song, you'll probably find it in at least some corner of the internet somewhere. Now, our next two points, they're very closely related. Now, if the most important thing uh, was song selection, then number two, your next most important thing is how you practice it. Now the temptation is usually to just to jump straight into it, playing it kind of full speed, right? Say you wanted to learn Stand By Me, you might want to go straight into playing it with the recording. Yeah? But if you've never played before, you might just find that it goes past a little bit too quickly, right? It's just too fast. The solution is pretty obvious. Just 
play it slower and work your way up. Being extra attentive to every single tiny movement you're making, every single choice you're making with your fingers, uh, you know, which fingers play what, the position you play everything in, all that kind of stuff. If you can't play it slowly, then you can't play it quickly. It's like that Navy SEAL thing, uh, smooth is, uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Very, very true when it comes to playing bass. And if you are trying to play along with a song from YouTube, you can actually change the speed of the song without changing the pick, pitch, which makes things way, way easier to play, right? It's very simple. If you're on your computer, just go down to this little gear down here called settings and go up to playback speed, and you have a few default there's, uh, defaults there. One X is the original speed, then you have 0.5X, so half speed, all the way up to 2X, so twice as fast. And if something is giving you trouble, just drop it down to half speed and try and play it there. You even have the option to get even more granular here if you select custom. Uh, it's a super cool feature that you can use to make things way, way easier. If you've got the song that you're trying to learn on your computer, then you can use free media players like VLC to change the speed of the recording without changing the pitch. Uh, VLC is totally free, it's what I use. It looks like this. So here's the song I'm playing. <laughs> But if I go up to the playback menu here, I've got this little spectrum here and I can get super detailed with how fast I want it to be. So I can go down to 50%, go down to 75%, 78%, you know, this is great because you can master something at 50% of the speed and then just increase it in tiny amounts and do things like that until you're playing at full tilt. Remember, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Okay, so you've picked a great first song to nail. You're playing it slowly, but with maximum attention to detail. The next thing you should pay attention to is practicing your song as in time as much as possible. Whether that's with the recordings, like we were just saying, or even with a practice track, or even just a plain old metronome. You wanna get in the habit as early as possible to play as in time as possible every time you pick up your bass. Basically, you wanna get past this kind of thing as quickly as possible, where, where you start off and you're like, you know, that whole thing where you're kind of trudging past the notes. You wanna get past that, even if the tempo is, you know, at a snail's pace, but you do wanna keep tempo. You wanna be rock solid, rock steady, and like I said, you can build that speed up over time. Now, why is this? Why is it important to, you know, play as in time as possible? It's because as a bass player, holding down the groove and playing in time is your primary goal. You can have all the chops and the theory knowledge and you know, know all the songs in the world, but if you can't lock in with a drummer and create a nice deep pocket, then no one's gonna really wanna play with you. That's why I say, you know, play with recordings, play with tracks, play with metronomes. Do your best to develop a strong sense of time. Strong enough that if you take everything else away and it's just you playing, then anyone listening would be able to tell exactly where the beat is and sing along with you pretty easily, like this. So. So hopefully when I play that, you can clearly hear where the beat is and you could totally sing along with this, you know, if you were so inclined. And speaking of singing, that is thing number four I suggest. Sing what you're playing uh, like this. Now, even if you're not a great singer at all, I'm not a great singer at all, this is just a great exercise to do, even if the notes you're singing are completely wrong. Like, the notes don't matter nearly as much uh, as the rhythm. In many cases, the rhythm and the way you play it, the way you sing it, is gonna be way more important than the notes. Basically, you wanna sing the line as you would want to hear it coming out of your bass. That means if you want one note to be super short, then sing it super short, and then translate that to playing it super short on your bass. It's the difference between this, da, 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 and this. You know, neither one is inherently wrong or right, but how you sing it will almost certainly affect how you play it. So sing it the way you want it to sound and it's gonna have a much better chance of coming out that way on your bass. Now those are the four most important pieces of the puzzle. Picking the right song, playing it slowly to begin with, playing it as in time as much as possible and then singing what you're playing. Now if you can do these four things, you'll nail your first song and you can use the exact same process to nail every single other song after that as well. And if you're impatient and just want to get started immediately, I'd love to give you the tabs and notation 
for you know five beginner friendly basslines that are guaranteed to impress. Uh, these are basslines that you can play, people will listen to and instantly recognize them and get excited about your bass playing. And it actually includes one of the basslines I've been using as an example in this video. So to get the tabs and music for them, and uh, you know, just click the link in the description or right here, fill out the form on that page and I'll send them directly to you 100% free. You can start nailing your very first song in less than 60 seconds from now. So head to the site and I'll see you there.